Hello, I am live, and today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I am going to tell you a story. Now, uh, this story contains many elements that you may consider to be uh, classic staples. And uh, I'm going to hopefully, with this story, make a helpful point that will... Uh, that you can perhaps consider when planning and running role-playing games. So, I would like you to imagine a city, a prosperous city called Silene. It is out in an arid place of the world, uh, and uh, but despite this, it is prosperous. And Silene is uh, ruled over by a king who has uh, a daughter, who is a princess, and he loves her very much. Uh, and things are going great for Silene. It is a, it's an absolutely fantastic place to live. Um, they have uh, stalls at the marketplace every day with trade coming in and out. Everything is going absolutely fantastically. Until the dragon arrives. Uh, there is a lake by this uh, city. And from it emerges a dragon, and not just any ordinary dragon, this is a plague dragon. A dragon that, should it breathe upon you, then pestilence shall befall you, and you will basically wither, and wet, wither away and die on the spot, right? It is, it is a pretty terrifying kind of dragon. And the people of Silene are beside themselves. They're terrified, they have no idea what is going on with this dragon. Absolutely terrified. Um, so the king demands that uh, everyone who has livestock must surrender all of the livestock to uh, the king so the dragon can be appeased. And every day, two sheep or two cows or whatever will be sent out of the city to feed the dragon so the dragon doesn't get any. Uh, hungry ideas about the uh, the denizens of Silene. And the dragon eats and eats and eats every day, these two poor <laughs> livestock, whether they be goats, sheep, cows, whatever. Um, unfortunately, the city starts running low on uh, it starts running low on livestock. In fact, they run out. And this is a big problem. <laughs> so the king, in his almighty wisdom, decides to begin a lottery. Uh, for those of you watching, some of you may be familiar with uh, the idea of decimation, where uh, Roman forces would punish um, uh, entire collectors of men that, say, ran away from battle by having many of them draw stones from a bag. And if they happened to draw a white stone, that would mean that they would be executed or punished for the crime. This was no different, uh, and a lot of it was held. So every day, uh, someone would be sent out of the city to be devoured by the uh, the dragon, the plague dragon of old. Uh, and things aren't going very well. But at least it's a lottery, at least it's fair. And then one day, the lottery is drawn and... It is none other than the princess herself that has to go to face the dragon. And the king begs his people. He says, I will give you gold. I will give you silver. I will give you my entire kingdom if you have it so that my daughter is not the one to go out there to face the dragon. I mean, she's your heir. Come on. The people aren't having any of it. They're saying, fair spare. Our families have had to go out there to the dragon. Now it's your turn. So the king can do nothing. Uh, his people have spoken. And the uh, princess is sent out into the uh, outside of the walls by the lake to await the dragon. For some reason, I don't know why, but for some reason uh, she is fitted with a bridal gown uh, to uh, basically, I guess, to denote her purity, the fact that she's going on to the next life. Uh, to show that she's lived a virtuous life so that she goes to a better place when she dies. That's my interpretation, anyway. Um, 
So the dragon comes out of the water and uh, sees the princess. It's dinner time, right? And the dragon uh, is bearing down upon her when a cry goes up from a hill across the other side of the lake. Sat upon a, a mighty stallion, a Templar banner flowing in the breeze, is a knight. A Templar knight that some people will know, know as St. George. St. George is returning from the Crusades uh, against Salahadin <laughs> and uh, spots this dragon and charges it uh, with his lance aloft. Uh, the dragon turns to blast this uh, pitiful human being uh, with just a uh, plague breath, essentially, uh, to make him wither uh, before it. Um, but the mighty St. George raises his shield, uh, protecting him from this blast of dark energy, and he drives the lance into the dragon. The dragon is utterly surprised, and his uh, strike is true. Uh, the dragon is uh, crippled, but not dead, uh, and it flails about like an animal possessed. Um, the, uh, the knight, St. George, um, calls for the princess for her garter for some reason, and it must be a pretty big garter because what he does is that he takes this garter uh, and either stretches it or it's massive and he puts it over the dragon's neck. And as soon as he does that, he is completely docile, as docile as the livestock that it's been consuming all this time. And the princess says, thank you, thank you so much for saving my life. And St. George says, no problem. Now let us uh, parade this dragon into the city of Silene. I will show your people that they no longer have anything to fear. Leading the dragon behind him like a dog, like a docile creature, uh, they, they march through uh, the now open gates of Silene. Um, and uh, the townsfolk are all terrified still because the dragon has now been brought into their keep into the into the place where they thought themselves to be safe and the king himself meets saint george and says what the hell man <laughs> like what are you doing and saint george simply says now you have a choice you can kill no sorry i can kill this dragon or i can let it go i will only kill this dragon if you convert to Christianity. See how this tale turns? The king instantly agrees and says, yes, absolutely, of course, we will all convert to Catholicism. We will, we will bow down to God. This is exactly, this is exactly what, what we wanted to do anyway. We just needed the motivation of you killing a dragon for us first. And St. George looks him in the eye and says, very well and drives his sword into the heart of the dragon, who then uh, dies. That is the story of St. George. It is St. George's day today here in the UK, uh, and that is the story of our patron saint, the Mike Templar that, uh, whilst returning from the Crusades, um, came across uh, a villainous dragon, um, but found slaying it within, while slaying it, an opportunity to spread the word of his Lord. Now, the reason I bring this up is this is something that I absolutely love to do with role playing games. I'm just going to have a puff. I'm going to read some comments as well because I see uh, not many people drop by today. It's a Sunday, though, to be fair. Other people are doing other stuff. See, Carl Swanson was here and says, Rob, good afternoon. And I say good evening to you in return. Michael Kennedy says, I shouldn't have jumped into this in the middle. Oh, I do apologize. Well, um, the reason I wanted to go into that, first of all, was to give kind of context to this. So when people watch this later, they'll get the full story. I'm also going to whack this onto YouTube as well, like I often do, um, to ensure that my 
channel gets this um, content as well, I guess. Um, Kristen Logie says, uh, afternoon, Rob. Hey, man, how's it going? Uh, Cameron is here as well. Hey, man, how's it going? He says, beautiful story, Rob. That's the first time I've heard the story in full. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, I, um, I've i heard this story a lot growing up in the UK, like you hear the story of St. George. Uh, you hear about the bravery. You hear about this guy who shows up on a horse, sword and shield in hand, and um, slays the beast, slay, uh, slays the princess. No, he doesn't. He saves the princess. Um, <laughs> that'd be a different story. Um, slays the beast, and there's a happily ever after where he's heralded as a hero, you know. But what a lot of the adaptions uh, miss out is the fact that St. George actually uses that as an opportunity to convert the people of Silene to Christianity. He sees it as an opportunity to um, uh, to kind of get what he wants, to make people believe what he believes. Um, and uh, I find that really interesting. I also, what I find really interesting in role-playing games is that you have all of these legends, you have all of these things that have happened before, you have, you know, everyone likes writing their own mythology and pantheons and uh, uh, backstories down about the world, but what I really like doing is telling the story behind the story. What I've been doing with the Law Keepers quite a lot lately, the Law Keepers lately, I've had um, the drow basically come forward and say, you know, it, it basically rules as written, drow basically are... Uh, were banished into the Underdark by the Elves uh, for subverting their ways, you know. The, uh, the Drow are evil and should be banished into the darkness. But in my world, uh, when addressing the Drow with this, the Drow is saying, no, 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 we chose to come down here. We chose to come down here to defend you guys from everything down here. Are you fucking kidding me? Like, I like examining the other side of the story. And this is why I brought this up, and I thought it fitting as it's St. George's Day today. What if... What if the uh, the mighty St. George wasn't just a knight in shining armor? What if uh, St. George actually engineered this to happen? What if St. George knew of a wizard or knew of someone who was able to bring about this plague dragon, bring it into existence to cause the problem in the first place for him to fix so then he can convert the city uh, to his religion. Imagine that in your fantasy world. I mean, obviously this didn't happen. Obviously there wasn't a dragon. Although allegedly Silene, the city of Silene, it was regarded as somewhere in Syria. Um, though most people believe it's a fictional city. Um, uh, this is all fictional. I'm pretty sure this didn't happen. But uh, it'll be a more beautiful world, I suppose, in some ways, if it had, because then that would have meant dragons existed. But sadly not to be. Um, but what if St. George was the one that actually was uh, behind this in the first place? What if it was he, and I know this is probably exactly saying about this, about a patron saint on his day, but come on, we live in a free world. We can talk about what we like. Um, what, you know, like, I just love that idea. Imagine that just in your setting. Imagine that in a fantasy world that, like, everyone knows that um, the, imagine if your uh, re religion, uh, the religion in your world is like the eternal fire or something. Um, and uh, it is said that the eternal fire uh, became the uh, the religion of this of this land because of the fact that it stopped a plague, uh, and everyone was really thankful for it. And you know, this is um, th we we now thank this religion. We thank that God now because of the time it came to us in our hour of need. But what if that hour of need was engineered to control people in the first place? Um, it's the, telling these kinds of stories that I really, really enjoy with law keepers because I'm dealing with a lot of law. Like basically every session, I like to give the players a, just a bit of law that is um, within context to what they're actually dealing with. Like I don't like believe in opening a book and going, "This is what happened," and then this is what happened. But if it's to do with what they're actually experiencing at the time, then you can drop that law all over them like maple syrup. It's great. Uh, Kristen Logan says, this actually reminds me a lot of a side quest in Skyrim. Great game Skyrim is playing today. Uh, where there's a folk hero who ca slayed, captured a dragon, uh, and uh, you had to basically assist in making a song that paints him as a manipulator. I know the quest you mean. Uh, not the hero everyone sees him as. Yeah, absolutely. Like, um, the, oh, I wish I could remember his name now. Um, but yeah, you're absolutely right. Like, um, the story goes that, yeah, he... Um, he he basically defeated the dragon, whether he slayed or uh, slayed or captured it, I can't remember. But you're absolutely right. 
uh, he basically goes about, uh, it's part of the Bard's College, isn't it? Because Bards are the ones that shape the, the history books, let's face it. Um, and uh, yeah, this is a really good example. Like once again, the dragon that, that um, he actually made a deal with the dragon, I think is what it was. And the dragon then caused the decimation, then he just sent it away. Um, it's uh, it's very, very sexy. It's very sexy indeed. Uh, I said sexy because <laughs> I was reading what Brandish said. <laughs> it's very sexy. It's so sexy. Oh my god, my brain just exploded. It's very sexy indeed. Now the reason I was saying that is because I was looking at what Hankering was saying in the next comment. <laughs> Who says someone so neat se someone so sexy needs wall art. Uh, if you're commenting about this, this is the spare room uh, um, in my house. Uh, and we haven't got round to really decorating the spare room, unfortunately. Um, also, the landlord is a bit worried about us putting nails on the wall, but we're going to defy him soon. And we're going to put some wicked art up. It's going to be cool. Uh, but yes, after that, <laughs> that's so sexy. The, the story about the guy deceiving with the dragon is so sexy. Whoa. Uh, Cameron says, um, you could turn the entire story in its head, an anti-paladin. Uh, fabricated a situation with a dragon uh, eventually marrying uh, uh, this princess and taking over the kingdom religious conversion and all and that could be used with many religions good evil neutral otherwise yeah absolutely um i mean i, I don't want to go into this too much like because I, I i don't like forcing my own opinions on other people but i'm of the belief that um uh, organized religion not faith but organized religion uh, like the Catholic Church and things like that, is born, was built to control, unfortunately. Um, that's my opinion. Don't have a go if you're uh, highly religious. You have the right to your opinion. I have the right to mine. Uh, but certain organisations like that are built to control. And you do have to wonder sometimes, well, all these stories, what's the truth of them, you know? Um, but it makes very, very interesting uh, storytelling and very interesting role-playing. It's the other side of the story, you know? Maybe... Maybe not everyone, maybe these people don't have it right all the time, you know. Um, Christian Logie says, uh, freaking sticking at keyboard, making me misspell your name. Did you misspell my name? I did notice you misspelled my name. Um, no. It looks like that you spelt my name correctly. Rob, R-O-B. Quite an easy one, to be fair. Um... But yeah, so uh, have you guys ever like told a um, a, a story with an alternate uh, an alternate law the uh, the history that the loser would have written? Uh, this is the thing that I basically said when I was talking about first sight law keepers was uh, like you guys to imagine like a alternate you know history is written by the victor, but but legends are forged by the brave. You know, like two sides to every story. So if anyone has any, um, uh, well, I have, I have a sip of tea. Does anyone else have any um, examples of times that you've done that in your world? And for those watching on YouTube as well, whack it in the comments as well. I'd be interested to hear. I have to keep remembering that I'm recording for two audiences here, uh, YouTube and um, and for Facebook Live. Uh, oh, and this is something else I should I should apologize. My, yeah, my last video I didn't realize basically when I do these I basically just rip them straight off Facebook whack them into YouTube and I should have really checked it last time because uh, I didn't notice that I uh, it's actually quite glitchy on my last video that I uploaded uh, from a live stream unfortunately um, so hopefully it won't be like that this time hopefully uh, and if it is then I'll maybe it's because I'm too far away from the router maybe it's because I need to sort something out I don't know uh, but yeah, I mean, those, those are two examples that I can think of. And I thought, as it is St. George's Day, it is quite a, a good way of, uh, of exploring this particular topic. Um, what else can I say? I mean, like I say, I, I've done that with the drow as well in, in the Law Keepers. The drow aren't uh, exactly the people that they've been made out to be. Um, uh, and I happen to run a world that is particularly um, controlling and likes people to view things in a certain way. Um, because they like to control people. 
um, and it benefits them to make sure that people don't think of the drown a certain way. Um, but they're badass as well, to be fair, and incredibly dangerous, and do have their own reasons. You do people in my world have their own reasons for being scared of the drow because not one but two, uh, like Titanic wars were fought with a drow, um, both which didn't end particularly well for either side. Um, so um, I'm just trying to think of another example. Uh, but you know what? I think. Oh, there we go. I'm going to put on my uh, my old uh, vision of the Um Kristen then goes on to say, yeah, I kind of uh, did that after watching uh, FMA Brotherhood. Oh, Full Metal, Al Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. I've not actually watched Full Metal Alchemist, but uh, Alchemist rather, but uh, I hear it is really good. Uh, so he says, um, I kind of did that after watching Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood uh, with the Eastern and Western Sage. In my world, there's a guild called the Wardens, and I made up a character for it that's one of the greats of history. Little do people know that he basically performed homicides for the sake of being thorough. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there is, uh, uh, Kristen says, uh, to clarify, he was a witch hunter, heretic, cults, things like that. Yeah, in fact, um, the uh, the witch hunters and the law keepers are um, are very similar in that regard. They they see things their way and they hunt people down <laughs> because of it, um, um, because people don't want to tell their side of the story, as it were. Um, Cameron uh, says uh, I'm doing a similar situation with the giants as opposed to drow. These two tribes of giants have uh, ancient claims to lands humans now inhabit. Uh, these human villages are caught between the, these battling giants and in trying to work out the what's the giant side of the story, uh, this video totally helps the brainstorming. Absolutely, man, that sounds like really cool stuff. Like kind of, um, I don't know, are you using, I recommend if you're not using Storm King's Thunder because there's some wicked giant stuff in there. Um, but uh yeah no man like uh it's it's great like uh and at the end of the day like it's always better to have like two sides of the story because then you're not dealing with two-dimensional characters you know uh and to be honest sometimes there's nothing wrong there's nothing wrong at all with having two-dimensional characters sometimes in role-playing games i mean sometimes the villains are just there to be the villain you know sometimes they basically want reward. Villain wants reward. Villain wants to raise, um, uh, basically wants to manifest Vecna on the material plane, okay? Uh, and in return, Vecna will make him one of his lieutenants in the apocalypse to follow. Like, um, I don't know, Vecna might not suit that, but it's Vecna. Secrets and death, I think. Yeah, death. Um, Anyway, <laughs> I'm getting hung up on 3.5 pound pantheon. Um, yeah, so like villains, uh, I'm talking about 2D villains, that's right. So villain wants reward, villain does things to get reward from blah, blah, blah. Like they want, so yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. But um, having a different side of the story, having um, them having a reason, like uh, with Cameron's point for, uh, you know, with the giants fighting that, well, both of them seem to have a claim on the same piece of land. And um, both have, a right to a right to it. Now, an interesting thing would be in that situation is to would the party side with a particular um, uh, collection of giants, or would they try and broker a peace? Like having those two different sides uh, basically enables your players to make choices, and choices are things that make the role playing games resonate. They're choices like that that are the thing. This is the reason why we play. So because we want to have an impact, we want that very similitude that we want to make it we want it to seem all flowing and, and bigger than us and the idea of us making decisions that impact the rest of the world well having two sides of the story basically means that you basically pick one that you want to believe and pick one that you want to side with or try and unite them together to um, to live in peace who knows um yeah this is good fun uh, I'm gonna have another puff. Gonna have a sip of tea. Uh, if anyone else wants to say anything about their alternate um, mythologies or other sides of the story, by all means. Otherwise, riveting watching me smoke this, isn't it? Um, 
I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I can tell you guys. Oh, oh my God, yeah. Well, I tell you, I can tell you this before I finish up. So, speaking of the law keepers, uh, next weekend, um, the 29th for those in the US and the 30th, uh, because it starts at midnight uh, UK time, all very confusing. But for all the experts, the 29th. Uh, is uh, the Law Keepers Chapter Six, the Deep Lantern. Uh, I'm really excited about this one. Uh, this is going to uh, uh, delve deeper, if you'll pardon the pun, uh, into the Underdark. Uh, this is going to um, reveal a number of things, and it's uh, it's also a critical session because. Uh, the player's uh, success mean they either win allies or they don't. And if they don't win allies, then things are going to become incredibly problematic for them. And this is the thing. I'm really, really excited about this because it can go either way at this point. Uh, I've set up all the pieces. It is now uh, the player's turn to see if they can um, resolve it and uh, uncover the mystery of what's going on in the drow city of Talisan, the stalactite city that hangs above the light drinker depths. Um, so yeah, check that out. Uh, it is this weekend and it will be available here on Performance Check for you to watch at your leisure as well. Uh, Christine says, uh, something I want to do as a DM uh, is I want to run a big band that isn't necessarily unpopular in the kingdom he's trying to conquer. In fact, uh, the political revolution he'll be trying to inspire is in many ways better than what's currently in place. That's really cool, man. Like, uh, uh, and I don't need to point to figures in uh, current events right now that that is reminiscent of, you know, like, um, and it's always the way. Like, that's the thing. Like, a lot of people, uh, a lot of villainous types that uh, throughout history and throughout storytelling as well, um, a lot of people get behind them uh, and a lot of people desire change and when they see uh, a madman or a tyrant promising them change then sometimes people forget the uh, the more important things about life like understanding uh, and uh, empathy you know uh Kristen Logan continues to say, so I want to really get into the political side of role playing where the outcome of the story is entirely on the players Absolutely, man. Um, you know, this is actually reminding me of something, and this is something that I've been, I've been wanting to do for a little while. And I might, I might. Ah, this is the thing. I don't know whether I will run it yet or save it, but I, I just had this yearning to play a very political um, game of D and D, where essentially it's going to be about kingdom building. I want. I want a group of players to basically build a kingdom. Uh, and there will, I suppose there'll be the odd like fight, I guess, because it will be like in a feudal system where ground has to be fought and won, you know, over. Um, but generally speaking, like I really like the idea of them founding an actual kingdom, you know, that they have to manage and that they have to deal with neighboring kingdoms and they, they have to choose either peace or war, you know, like, um, Almost like a, a, a real-time strategy game, but from the role-playing perspective. Um, now, I know that there are games out there that can fulfill this, um, but I kind of want to do it in D&D, because uh, it's the one that I'm strongest at, uh, with in terms of what I can run. But I know there is a game that, co that comes from the makers of um, Microscope. Um, the guys who make Microscope, they've also made a game called Kingdom. Um, which I would love to run, but that's more of like a building thing. That's more like building the kingdom, like uh, and, and the world essentially. Whereas I want it to actually be thriving and alive, and them actually playing in it, you know, with uh, role playing interactions. I haven't decided yet, but I have a few ideas about it uh, that I've been kicking around. So uh, if I do uh, finalize anything, then I will totally whack it onto here, and we can get something going. Um, yeah, that's something i'm after doing soon uh carl also says uh, internet dropped the ball for a few minutes there i'll have to catch up later uh but i'm back uh, for the rest of the stream 
cool man i'm just talking about my kingdom building campaign that i've been going over um i just uh, i just really like the idea of it like um and this was this has come again from just my love of D&D like when I used to this is more face to face D&D than online like like I've said before in my other stuff like with my online stuff I like to there is a certain part of me that wants to make the the uh, the experience of the law keepers enjoyable to simply watch as well as uh, as well as play um, and I'm I really like that. I like the challenge of, uh, of that. Um, but with this, like I'm looking for a much more in-depth, I want I want my players to sit around and sort of discuss that kind of thing. Like the way I used to play D&D was that we would have like a new realm every campaign. So, uh, and we would get keeps, like we would take over a keep from a bandit lord that was presiding over there. We'd say, right now this is ours. And we'd fortify it and we'd fill it with people and we build our own towns and stuff throughout D D whilst doing other adventures um and that's something that uh i haven't been wanting to do with law keepers as much because it's more focused on the the driving story rather than sitting back and managing assets and things like that but i want to get my crunch on i want to get my uh my diplomacy crunch on so uh yeah watch the space for that um Kristen says, oh man, that reminds me of uh, uh, an old Pathfinder module called Kingmaker. That's exactly what I thought when you said it. I'm no other module, man. I know exactly what you mean. Yes, you're absolutely right. Um, uh, yeah, like that's basically what I'm gunning for. Like I've had a bunch of different ideas like lately. I've, I've been feeling quite inspired lately. I've, I've come up with an idea for, um, I don't know whether it's, if it's a novel or a screenplay. I know how to write screenplays. I've done I've done a few screenplays before. I'm not really a prose co- like I can do prose, but like to be honest with you guys, like I'll start writing and I kind of get bored because I want to jump to the bits that excite me, um, which is why I know I'm a better <laughs> I'm a better actor than I'm a writer. But um, I've come up with a really cool idea for a story, which I might go into at some point uh, about dueling. Essentially, it's about dueling. Uh, from a historical point of view, like the like the real reasons behind duels and stuff, and the the etiquette and um, uh, screw it, I'm just going to tell you about it. The premise is right. The premise is, is that uh, essentially this is a imagine a world where uh, dueling is basically still a thing, right? Like duels are still a legal way to resolve disputes, uh, whether your honor is slighted, or whether you're being accused of a crime. Uh, people will basically go up to the other and say, I challenge you to a duel. But rich bureaucrats uh, and generals and lords and maybe even kings uh, are able to basically say, okay, fair enough, but uh, my um, my own duelist that I have on retainer or this duelist that I'm hi- hiring will fight my battles for me. So uh, essentially another person dies for the crime that I've committed. It's a very corrupt world, uh, and uh, something isn't right. Uh, and the character that I'll be focusing on is one of these duelists, who is basically a duelist for hire. And he's really good, because whenever you hire him, basically you can get away with any crime you've committed. Um, and it's kind of about the psycho- going into the psychology of this man, who because his abilities are basically letting, letting bad people off. And I won't go into this too much now, but when his own... Uh, honor is brought into question uh, and his own morality is brought into question that's when things start to change and the story begins uh but that's something i'm really excited about too maybe i can run a duelist game maybe i can convert it into some kind of game where people play different duelists and stuff i don't know uh but i've rambled on for quite a lot now so um i think that's going to be about it um no that's about it um so, uh, if you like this video, if you like uh, the story of the liberation of Silene and the Plague Dragon of Old, otherwise known as the Tale of St. George, uh, then, and the stuff that I've been talking about afterwards, then why not give this video a like? Ah, um, oh, damn it, there's a question. I was just wrapping up. All right, one more question. Kristin says, uh, but yeah, here's a question for you, Rob. If you had the option, would you uh, ever play in or run in a game of throne style gunning for power type political D D game where there's uh uh different battle allied members that will try and fill a power vacuum yeah well that's kind of what i'm going to go for actually is i'm going to try and run something like that where 
uh, it is it is about like because let's not forget like uh, if you're not <laughs> if you don't solidify your own power then you're going to be unstable and people will see your kingdom as either a threat or an opportunity like maybe your kingdom is standing in the way maybe people will want to conquer you you know if you you get conquered then you're screwed so maybe you should consider fighting someone instead like maybe conquer them first um and power vacuums all that kind of thing so yes i absolutely would consider playing and running in one of those games and i'm hopefully going to be doing that at some point i don't know when uh but yeah that's what i fancy doing anyway like i was saying if you enjoy what i spoke about today then maybe give this video a like if you would like to see more like it then give me a subscribe or not we're all friends here or are we Thanks for watching, and I hope that all of your performances are up to standard.